bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture so we in the last lecture read till the 27th of september where we heard about uh, mrs van dan complaining about anne frank being a spoiled girl and now we are going to read what happened on the 29th of september so try to picture this she says because we don't have a bathroom we take our water away to different places to wash peter takes a bath in the office kitchen mr van dan takes his bath upstairs mrs van dan is yet to take a bath she is waiting to see which the best place is father bathes in the private office and mother in the kitchen behind a screen Margaret and I have declared the front office to be our bathing grounds. We draw the curtains and scrub ourselves in semi-darkness. So she's telling us to imagine the way they take bath. So she says that since there is no bathroom that we have, we take water to different places of that building floor in order to wash ourselves. Peter takes a bath in the office kitchen. Mr Van Dan he would take his bath upstairs Mrs Van Dan has not taken a bath yet because she is trying to find out the best possible place for her Anne Frank's father would take a bath in the private office their mother would take a bath in the a kitchen behind a screen screen so there was a sort of a sheet that separated something probably in the kitchen so behind that screen she would take the bath and margaret and ann frank they had declared they had announced that the front office was their bathroom so there in semi darkness uh, you know they, when there was no light what would they do they would just draw curtains they would cover themselves with curtains and they would scrub themselves they would walk themselves so this is how they used to bathe this is how she has described to us the plumber was at work downstairs on wednesday we were not allowed to run water during the day and the bathroom was also off limits father and i found a suitable pot which we could use as a toilet we had to sit or sit still all day and not say a word you can imagine how hard that was for me So she tells us that on Wednesday morning there was a plumber who had come to probably fix some drains some pipes in the main office building and obviously nobody knew about them hiding on the next floor so the whole day they were not allowed to use any water and using a washroom using a bathroom was again something which was off limits which was beyond uh, you know uh, being possible for them so she along with her father they bought us they just found out a pot for themselves on which they sat and they used it as a toilet seat they had to still uh, sit still the whole day why were they supposed to sit still the whole day because if you are there let's say on the ground floor and there's somebody on the first floor or on the floor over your head walking or running or talking there is some sort of a movement that can be felt by you and that is something that they did not want that they could not afford to rather so the whole day they had to sit still they were not allowed to walk they were not allowed to move from their places and not even utter a single word and frank says that you all can imagine how hard that was for me so what was the hardest thing for ann frank to sit quiet and not to say a single word that day so thursday the 1st october 1942 I got a terrible shock yesterday at 8 o'clock the doorbell suddenly rang all i could think was that someone was getting coming to get us you know who i mean but i calmed down when everybody swore it must have been either pranksters or the mailmen from time to time peter can be very amusing he and i have only one thing in common 
we like to dress up so she tells us that yesterday that is the uh, you know the last day of september so wednesday what happened there was something that took place which shocked them uh, terribly at 8 o'clock there was a doorbell that rang the doorbell to the main office building rang and and frank's mind went on to pondering that it was probably the nazis <clears throat> who had got to know about their hiding place and had come to get them but then she calmed down because everybody swore everybody swore means everybody assured her that it was nobody but just some pranksters there were just you know some random people you know we have seen this and as kids i'm sure you must have done it yourself just ringing the doorbell and running away from there that was the best thing a child could do so they told her that probably it was some prankster or some mailman somebody who had come to deliver something some letters on to the office and she then tells us that from time to time peter can be very amusing amusing she's found peter to be a little funny at times there was only one thing that she found common between herself and peter and that was that they both liked to dress up one evening we made our appearance with peter in one of his mo- mother's skin tight dresses <clears throat> and me in his suit he wore a hat and uh, i had a cap on the grown ups split their sides laughing so obviously she tells us that one evening what did they do they cross dressed so peter dressed himself up as a woman where he chose to wear a tight fitted dress of his mother along with a hat and ann frank on the other hand uh, had worn a suit you know a uh, formal a male suit that belonged to peter along with a cap and the moment they appeared in front of the other family members they split their sides laughing split their sides laughing mean they just started laughing and they were laughing uncontrollably ellie bought new skirts for margaret and me at the bijan corp they looked like sacks so ellie as we had read the 23 year old receptionist who was aware of their presence so this girl brought both uh, both ann and margaret new skirts from the bijan corp bijan corp was the name of a store an outlet there and she says that those skirts looked like sacks what do we mean by sacks you know sacks are those things in which you put grains the brown colored things in which we store uh, you know grains or anything for that matter so that they can be transported from one place to the other so that is what a sack is friday october 9 1942 today i have nothing but dismal and depressing news to report our many jewish friends and acquaintances have been taken away by the dozen to the concentration camps at westerbrook westerbrook i'm sorry we assume that most of them are being murdered The English radio says they are being killed with gas. Perhaps that's the quickest way to die. Maybe you don't suffer too much pain. So 9th October she tells us that it was a very dismal, a very sad, a very depressing, a very disappointing day. It was a very unfortunate day. many of her jewish friends and acquaintances friends and acquaintances acquaintances refers to the people they know so many of her friends and the people that they knew were being taken to the concentration camps because they were caught and uh, they were assuming they were just believing of their own accord that those people are going to be killed they are going to be murdered 
the english radio said that they are being killed by gas so as per the radio it was reported that those people were made to die with the help of gas you know they were left in a gas chamber wherein the gases were so poisonous that when you inhale them you just die so ann says that probably that was the quickest way and uh the most uh, you know less painful way to die so this is what she thought tuesday 20th october 1942 my hand still shakes though it's been 2 hours since we had the scare we heard some loud noises at our bookcase door someone kept knocking on the door pulling and pushing it we turned white with fear we thought somebody had come to arrest us just when i thought my days were numbered we heard mr kupu's voice saying open up it's me the door was stuck and he could not open it so she tells us she narrates to us an incident because of which she says that it's been 2 hours since we had the scare so it's been 2 hours since that incident took place but it was so scary it was so fearful that her hands are still shivering with that and what incident took place that the door of the bookcase as i told you there was a bookcase which was placed outside their door but that bookcase was in hinges it was sort of broken and that way is one could enter and exit into their hiding so somebody was uh, knocking continuously onto their book uh, bookcase door pushing it pulling it and everyone in the hiding their faces turned white with fear they were so scared that their faces turned white they thought that somebody had finally found them and had come to arrest them just when i thought my days were numbered just when i thought my days were numbered means she thought that now they are going to be caught and she will have only a couple of more days maybe 2 3 4 days when she'd be alive they heard the sound of mr kupuis again one of the men, uh, one of the uh, man who knew about their presence in that secret annex and he said open up it is me the door was stuck and therefore he could not open it so he was pulling and pushing it continuously because the door was stuck and he was not able to open that we had lots of fun on monday meep and jan spent the night with us the menu was drawn up in their honor and the meal was delicious so she tells us that on monday they had a lot of fun because two of the office people meep and jan they spent the night with them since the menu was drawn up in their honor since the food was prepared specifically because they had guests that day therefore it was delicious now this is again something which takes place in every household the day you have guests you have lovely food to eat 9 November 1942 Yesterday was Peter's 16th birthday He received a game <clears throat> a man of monopoly a razor and a cigarette lighter Not that he smokes so much it just looks good The biggest surprise came from Mr Van Dan who reported that the English had landed in Tunis Algiers Casablanca and Oran It is not the end of the war yet but it has given us some hope. So yesterday that is the 8th of November was Peter's birthday. It was his 16th birthday and he got a number of gifts which included the game Monopoly. He received a razor for himself since he was growing up now and a cigarette lighter. She tells us that he did not get a cigarette lighter because he was a uh, you know that he smoked a lot but just because it looked good. But the best gift came from Mr Van Dan who told them that the English had landed. So the English people had come to Tunis, Algiers, Casablanca and Oran. So these states uh, were now uh, ruled or invaded by the English. 
and though the war had not come to an end but just the fact that out of the entire netherlands just four places were now ruled by english um they were a little hopeful that they might be saved i should talk to you about food at the annex bread is delivered daily by a very nice baker a friend of mr cookwis we also purchase ration books on the black market aside from the 100 cans of food we've stored here we bought 300 pounds of bean we decided to move them to the attic and peter was entrusted with the heavy lifting he managed to get almost all the sacks up intact however the last one broke and a flood of brown beans came pouring down the stairs peter was stunned but then burst into laughter when he saw me standing at the bottom of the stairs in a sea of brown we promptly began picking them up but the beans are so small and slippery that they uh, have rolled into every corner and hole now each time we go upstairs we bend over and hunt around for more beans so she tells us about the food at annex now every day they used to get fresh bread because a good baker who was a friend of mr coop who is would deliver the bread to the office now they purchased the ration from the black market obviously since they could not go to the normal market they would go to the black market to purchase ration from there apart from the 100 cans of food that they've stored so there were about 100 cans of food that they had stored there were 300 pounds of bean they decided that they are going to shift those uh, sacks of beans to the attic to the storeroom that was there and peter was entrusted with the heavy lifting entrusted it was believed that he was the most suitable person to do the task he managed to do it for all the sacks except for the last one the sack broke and all the beans came down from that sack and it seemed there was a flood of brown sacks uh, of you know of the brown beans that came pouring down the stairs so those brown beans they came pouring down from the stairs peter was stunned stunned he was obviously shocked because you know so many beans were just running down the stairs one after the other but then when he saw and frank who was standing at the bottom of the staircase with all the beans surrounding her he started laughing now they tried to pick up those beans and gather it at somewhere but the beans were so small and they were so slippery they were so uh, you know uh, you know slippery that they were not able to do it and the moment they would get hold of some beans the beans would roll to one place or the other and they knew that in every crack and hole every corner of the house every hole of the house the beans had rolled into and the situation was such that every time they would go upstairs they actually had to bend and would find whatever beans they could so that the same can be put into the attic tuesday 10th november 1942 great news we are planning to take an eighth person into hiding with us it is just as dangerous whether there are seven or eight and the situation outside is getting worse for jews we have chosen a dentist called albert dussel he is known to be quiet and refined and he seems nice meep knows him well so she'll be able to make the necessary arrangements If he comes Mr Dussel will have to sleep in my room instead of Margaret who will have to make do with the folding bed so 10th of November she tells us that uh, there was an eighth person apart from those seven people an eighth person was going to live with them and it was very dangerous obviously the more the number of people the chances of the neighbors getting to know of some suspicious movement in that building was higher so 
she said that obviously it was very dangerous for us to accommodate more people but the situation outside was getting worse for the jews and the person who was to live with them was called albert dussel now albert dussel was a uh, you know he was a dentist and he was a quiet a refined man refined a well mannered man me a uh, knew that person very well and so she would be able to do the necessary arrangements for this person and tells us that if this man will come to live with them then margaret will not sleep with ann rather she is going to sleep on the folding bed and some space in the room will be given to albert to sell tuesday 17th of november 1942 Mr Dessel had arrived everything went smoothly meep asked him to remove his coat so the yellow star could not be seen and brought him to the private office when he opened the bookcase and stepped inside mr dessel was amazed we were seated at the dining table waited for him waiting for him mr dessel sank into a chair and stared as at us in dumbstruck silence he thought we had left the country we all had lunch together then he took a short nap put away his belongings and began to feel much more at home especially when he we handed him the typewritten rules and regulations for the secret annex that van dans had written so on the 17th of november finally Mr Albert Dussel arrived to live with them everything was very smooth meep in or you know before she made him enter the office building she had made him remove his coat on which that yellow star was there remember i told you that the adults were supposed to wear that yellow star on their clothes so that they would be distinguished as jews so she removed that uh, coat and he was brought into the private office the moment he opened the gate the door of the bookcase he stepped inside and saw all seven of them he was totally dumbstruck he was amazed he was surprised why because he thought that all of them had escaped the country these people had been hiding it's been almost how many months they shifted in july and it was november now so obviously it was almost 3 and a half to 4 months that these people had been missing and so albert dussel thought that these people had escaped to some other country but they were there mr dussel sat into a chair and was again dumbstruck as i told you he was shocked they all had lunch together then he took a short nap he slept for a while and he was told to put away his things at the appropriate place and he was feeling he started feeling at home he started feeling comfortable when uh, especially when they he was handed over with the type written rules and regulations so there was a whole page which had the rules and regulations that had been written by mr van dan meant for the people who were going to live in that secret annex now what was what were the rules and the regulations that he had written secret annex was meant for jews and for the other people who did not have homes it was open all year round it was near to the center of amsterdam but in a quiet street which had only trees the price to live there was free the food given was low in fat water in the bathroom he had mentioned again so, uh, that sorry there is not a fixed bathroom that they had and also on some of the walls so the water was not only uh, around them but also on the walls that can be seen space for storing things was in abundance so there was a lot of space where they could store things private radio for all guests after the 6 after 6 pm 
but you must never listen to the news on german radio stations only music so again it was written that it was only music that you could listen to after 6 pm resting hours were 10 pm to 7:30 am 10 and 10:15 am on sundays this is for your safety the management may also ask you to rest at other times so the management just look at the way the rules were laid down management refers to the van dans and the franks family who had been living there for a while use of the language it was said that except for german you could use any other language but you have to be very soft when you speak exercise every day so one was supposed to exercise every day lessons that were taught or lessons that one could learn in that duration in that secret annex were english french and the other subjects singing was also allowed only softly but after 6 pm meal times were stated breakfast 9 am and sundays and holidays it was 11:30 am lunch there was a light meal that was there between 1:15 to 1:45 pm dinner sometimes was a hot meal sometimes was not the time of the dinner changes because of the radio news broadcast so the dinner was made as per the convenience and as per the timings of the radio news broadcast bath the movable bath can be used by all guests after 9 am on sundays you may take your bath in the bathroom kitchen private office or the front office that was all thursday 19th november 1942 just as we thought mr dessel is a very nice man of course he did not mind sharing a room with me to be honest i am not exactly delighted about it but you have to make sacrifices for a good cause If we can save even one of our friends the rest does not matter said father and he is absolutely right So Anne Frank tells us that as they had thought already Mr Russell was a very nice man he was supposed to share his room with Anne Frank and he did not mind that Although Anne Frank was not delighted about it and Frank was not very happy about it but she had been taught by her father that one has to make sacrifices for something good for a good reason at times you have to make sacrifices <clears throat> her father would tell her that if in this situation of unrest we can save only one of our friends you know that also is going to count and she agreed with it totally Mr Dussel has told us much about the outside world he had sad news countless friends and acquaintances have been taken off to a dreadful fate night after night green and grey military vehicles cruise the streets they knock on every door asking whether any jews live there if so the whole family is immediately taken away if not they proceed to the next house so mr dussel since he's just arrived he had a lot to tell to them about the outside world obviously the only things that he shared were sad news countless friends and acquaintances have been taken off to the dreadful fate dreadful scary so there were n number of people whom they knew who were their friends who had to meet that unfortunate fate wherein they were taken to the concentration camps or the extermination camps night after night green and gray military vehicles would cruise the streets they would be seen uh, you know strolling the streets they knock on every door they asked if there were any jews who lived in that house if yes then the entire family was taken away and if not then they would move on to the next door in the evenings when it's dark i often see long lines of good innocent people accompanied by crying children walking on and on 
They are ordered about by a handful of men who bully and beat them until they nearly drop. No one is spared. The sick, the elderly, children, babies and pregnant women all are marched to death. She tells us again that in the evenings after it is dark, she sees that there is a huge line of Jewish people, you know, those good, innocent people who continue to walk on the streets looking for a shelter for themselves. They have crying children along with them and they just continue to walk. They are ordered about by a handful of men. So there are a couple of men they come across on the streets who bully them, who trouble them, who beat them until they just lie down on the on the floor, you know, on the ground. Nobody is spared. Nobody was left. Nobody was given a benefit of doubt. Be it the sick people, be it the elderly people, the children, the babies, the pregnant women, everybody was tortured and they were all marched to death. So they used to just continue to walk and walk and the final fate, the final destiny that they reached was death. We are lucky here, away from the turmoil, but I feel bad sleeping in a warm bed. <clears throat> While somewhere out there, my dearest friends are suffering and only because they are Jews. She tells us that we are lucky that we are safe in this secret annex and we are away from this turmoil. Turmoil, this disturbance, this chaos, this unrest which was prevailing in the whole country at that time. But she said that at times I felt bad. That here I am sleeping next to my family in a very warm bed. But outside the secret annex, there were my friends, some of my very dearest friends who were suffering, who were going through a lot of problems in their lives. And the only reason why they were suffering was because they were Jews. Saturday, 28th November, 1942. Mr. Dussel, the man who was said to get along so well with children, has turned out to be old-fashioned and fussy. He gives me long lectures on manners and regularly complains to mother about me and I get scolded even more. In bed at night, as I think about my many sins, I get so confused. Am I really so bad? Afterwards, I end up crying or laughing, depending on my mood, and fall asleep and fall asleep wanting to be different. So, 28th of November, she tells us that Mr. Dussel, whom we once thought to be a nice man, somebody who was good with the children, has turned out to be very fussy. He was very old-fashioned and he had a problem with everything going on in the house. Anne Frank was again a target of Mr. Dussel as well. She tells us that the entire day he would keep on giving her lectures on good manners and would regularly complain to uh, her mother about Anne Frank and thus her mother would continue to scold her. At night before going to bed, she would think about the many sins. Sins, the bad things, the bad deeds that we do in life. So she would think about all the bad things that she's done throughout the day and would wonder if she's so bad. And then she says that depending on her mood, either she would cry before sleeping or she would laugh before sleeping. But whatever the case be, every day before sleeping, she would decide to be a different person in the morning, but she remains the same. Tuesday, 22nd December 1942. The Annex was delighted to hear that we'll all be receiving an extra quarter pound of butter for Christmas. Each of us is going to bake something with the butter. This morning, I made two cakes and a batch of cookies. So, Annex was delighted, was very happy to hear that they were going to receive an extra quantity of butter. Why? Because it was Christmas. 
Now, each one of them decided that they are going to use butter in one way or the other and make something for the others and for themselves. Anne herself made two cakes and a batch of cookies. My dear roommate, Mr. Dussel, thinks I make too much noise at nights and says shh, shh to me all night. According to him, I should not even turn over. He is particularly infuriating on Sundays when he switches on the light at the crack of dawn to exercise for 10 minutes. So she tells us that her dear roommate Mr. Dussel thought that Anne Frank made a lot of noise. And the whole night he would keep on shushing her. And Anne said sarcastically that according to Mr. Dussel, I could not or I should not have even switched sides. So just turning left or right at night while sleeping was not okay according to him. And she tells us that particularly on Sundays, it is very infuriating. He is very irritating. Anne Frank would find it very angry, was very annoyed when on Sundays... Uh, Mr. Dussel would turn on the light at the crack of the dawn. Dawn, early morning, before the sun rises. So on Sundays, he would switch on the light early morning and would exercise for 10 minutes. <laughs> My plans for revenge, such as unscrewing the light bulb, locking the door and hiding his clothes, have unfortunately had to be abandoned in the interests of peace. We've got to be reasonable about everything we do here. Studying, listening, holding our tongues, helping others, being kind, making compromises, and I don't know what. Now, Anne Frank adds humor to her writing by saying that she wanted to take revenge from Mr. Dussel. And how did she want to do that? There were multiple thoughts and plans that came to her mind. Unscrewing the light bulb. She thought of taking off the light bulb from that socket in which it was put. Locking the door. Hiding his clothes. But unfortunately, she had to abandon them. Abandon them, she had to just give away those plans. She had to forget those plans. She had to just take those plans out of her brain. Why? In the interests of peace. Because she did not want the peace of the house to be disrupted. She says that in there, inside that house, they had to be very reasonable about everything. They had to think about everything before they acted. Be it studying or listening, holding their tongues. Holding their tongues means speaking and how much to speak, what to speak, where to speak, when to speak. Everything was to be thought of. Helping the others, being kind, making compromises and the list goes on. So my dear students, Christmas is what they were looking forward to. They had butter for that as well. And with this note, I am going to pause here. We are going to continue and start with the new year, that is 1943, 13th Jan uh, January in our next video. So, I will see you all now in my next lecture. Thank you.